Okay, we're up and running. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us here again today. We are continuing our talk about our vlog spelling rules series. And today, Kate and I are here to visit with you about our second blog in the series. We're going to talk about how to spell k at the beginning of words. Um, if you didn't tune into our last blog, you can find it right at um, our website here at silvermoonspellingrules.com forward slash blog. And when you get to this page, you can go ahead and click on the blog of your choice. Our last blog was about a very commonly known spelling rule called the floss rule, or in silver moon terms, Samlo's fried zucchini. And today we're talking about uh, cubs can drink cola and kind Ken was stinky. <laughs> I just kind of funny to say. Um, yes, we both have education backgrounds. Um, <laughs> If you haven't met me before, if you're not familiar with who we are, my name is Kelly Steinke. I'm the founder of Read Learning Educational Services. I'm also the author and creator of Silver Moon Spelling Rules, which is a supplemental spelling rule system that is Orton Gillingham influenced. Here with me today is my expert blogger, Kate <laughs> Wagner. Oh, I get to be an expert now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kate Wagner, and I um, have recently begun writing blogs for Silver Moon Spelling. I'm also one of the ro remote online instructors with Read Learning Services and our remote instructor learning coach as well. I'm happy to be here with you. Okay, so thank you everyone for joining us. Mm -hmm. Like I said, if you want to find our blog page, just go right to silvermoonspellingrules.com forward slash blog. And today we're going to click on the, the uh, latest blog, which will open up here on our page. And this has got kind of a really cute witty title, mm -hmm. Kate, tricks to sort out the k conundrum. <laughs> that alliteration. <laughs> exactly. You have to throw that in there. <laughs> Even yeah, if the topic yeah. can get dry, we can find some fun in it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, I've, I've had Silver Moon at a couple different, well, well, several different conferences, educational conferences. And I had one, uh, a reading researcher come up to my, my table, my vendor table at one time. And she says, you know, this is really great. Uh, <laughs> this is like taking plain, boring oatmeal and really spicing it up with some brown sugar and blueberries and maple syrup and you know, uh, pecans. And I thought, yeah, that's a really cute way to describe mm -hmm. the spelling rule system I've created because spelling rules are typically pretty dry and pretty boring. I agree. I think that uh, the traditional, gone are the days of the traditional spelling rules where you, with the rote memorization and what you've really done is you've given these rules a life of their own and characters. And so today with our spelling k rules, we do have a couple characters to guide us through these uh, two spelling rules in this blog. Yeah, and you know, if you just do a general Google search on how to spell k at the beginning of words, you're going to come up with a lot of information on, you know, when to use c and when to use k. And you know, I remember going through a, an Orton Gillingham uh, training at one point, and the the instructor did use a couple different sketches. You know, the k had the sketch of the kite. Um, and then the C was always a cat with the A-O-U, the vowels embedded in it. So um, what I've done is really taken those little more crude pictures, sketches, and we've brought them to life with a couple characters here, which I'm going to open up for you right now. Okay, so if you'll take a look, we're just going to zoom in here. Ooh, that was a little bit too big. Mm -hmm. And um, Cubs can drink cola and kind Ken was stinky. And if you take a look at this blog resource, uh, you're going to find that you're only going to spell k at the beginning of words with a C if you have certain letters behind that, that C. So you're going to need an A, O, U, or a consonant after that C in order to get the right sound. Kate, did you want to talk a little bit about the watch out vowels? There's yeah. a look out vowels. 
Absolutely. So this has this is always the conundrum because we when we think of the k sound, we really think of two main letters. We think about C and we think about K. Of course, we know uh, as educators that if you spell a word with a C and you have an E, I, or Y after it, or as we like to call them, watch out or sneaky sounds, it will change the sound of the C to make that s sound. So if we want to want to keep the k sound, you have to flip to our next character, which is kind Ken. And he is oh so stinky <laughs> with his lookout vowels embedded in the picture. If you look very carefully, you'll see that E-I-Y. So you have to switch to the K when you see that E-I or Y coming after the sound. Yeah, you know, because if, if you end up spelling kind with a C, of course, you'll get the mm -hmm. word signed. And mm -hmm. with a C, you'll get sen. Um, and stinky would just be all sorts of confusing. We'd have <laughs> something like stincy. Uh, so it, like Kate said, embedded in these pictures, you have uh, clues to help the students remember how to use these rules. And I'm not going to give that away right now. You, if you end up picking up a copy of our instructor's manual um, with your student rule cards, you can search through these pictures and you'll be able to find an E, I, and a Y mm -hmm. right in Ken's image. You'll also find an A, O, and U embedded in the image of the cubs. Yes. And just a just a bit about, you know, our learners and me as a learner personally, I am such a visual learner. And I would say that most of the population benefits from having a visual. So our goal is always to have our students be able to pull these characters and images in their minds, even when they don't have them right in front of them, that to help them remember those rules. So I think that's really clever to have those hidden hidden secret letters as well to keep engagement and to enhance that uh, recall device. Yeah, thanks. That, yeah, it is, it's just a lot of fun. You know, mm -hmm. um, spelling rules can be pretty boring unless you add a little splash of fun to them, uh, which is what, what I went ahead and did here. So now I'm gonna shrink this back down and, and we'll go back to our blog page. Mm -hmm. Uh, because the concept we just described, you'll find, you know, a lot more information throughout this blog. Uh, and a couple things to look out for would be positional terms before and after. Kate, did you want to speak to that just a little bit? Yes. So I think one of our prerequisites before you're able to teach this skill is really under really understanding your student and understanding what they know about sequencing a word. Do they understand that after is to the, in reading order, to the right? Do they understand that term? So really, you know, pulling apart these small steps that sometimes we take for granted and really getting to know your, your student as a learner. So before would obviously refer to the k sound, that letter before, and after referring to whatever sound comes after. If they understand those concepts, you can begin to work in these terms as you're teaching this rule. Yeah, that's, it's really, it takes a little bit of task analysis to really teach these very effectively. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've circled the, the spot here I love using the annotate tool. I think it's fun, fun. <laughs> <I agree. laughs> to point out, you know, there's some tips here before you begin teaching uh, and that before and after tip is right here in the blog. That's a really good one to keep in mind. I've tried to pull apart some of those idiosyncrasies for you so that you don't have to sit down and task analyze yourself. So hopefully this blog will serve as a good resource for you and take a little bit of the work out of the teaching for you as well. Yeah, you know, there's one other point I wanna bring up here because you have a good uh, tip here with the CK because of course, you know, if you picture words in our English language, you'll mm -hmm. never ever have a word that starts with a CK. And that might seem pretty obvious to most people, but there's actually a reason for it. 
you know, just kind of explaining these really simple concepts, but, but very detailed concepts uh, really shed a lot of light and understanding on uh, spelling patterns in our English language. And I think there is power in questioning. And that's that's a point that you know, good educators already know is asking those questions repetitively to your student to get them to start thinking critically about what they're doing. Hold on, does it have a short vowel before it? Mm, then it can't be a CK, right? And going through that questioning procedure, I think we spoke a little bit about this when we were talking about our last spelling rule in the last blog. But there really is power in that questioning to, to deepen the understanding and that metacognitive skill that we're always trying to build with students. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I think that's often called guided discovery mm -hmm. when you're asking questions and really guiding a student to discover their own answer, uh, but you're there to help them and, and guide them to that answer. So with this blog, uh, Kate also went ahead and created a couple of activity pages here, which I'm going to open up for you. Because they she's opening that, you can find them as uh, embedded right into the blog and can download them completely for free. So. Yeah, and again, if you're just popping on right now, it's uh, we're at www.silvermoonspellingrules.com forward slash blog. <laughs> Think about that. Um, and here are the examples of the activity pages that go with our rule for sorting out the k conundrum. <laughs> the k conundrum. So if you start off um, on the first page, I really separated these reproducibles into the R2 rules. So we have cubs can drink cola, and then that's followed by Ken, kind Ken was stinky. If you're looking at both of these sheets, I start each one with a fill in the blank with the word bank to really verbalize those rules. And I find this is a resource that students can keep coming back to as well because it's really just their rule dictionary. So I always suggest that if you're starting to build up these rules, have your students hang on to these and maybe put them in a folder or a binder so that they can keep coming back to them. Underneath each of the rules, we also have some practice activities. And these would be more of those activities that could be independent or guided practice. It, it's really up to you and what your style is and how independent your student is. And then our final worksheet is a guided uh, collaborative worksheet with the instructor and the student or the parent and the student that combines both of those rules, kind Ken, and Cubs Can Drink Cola. And it is a prompting activity where you would prompt your student to say the word and then spell the word, possibly using your capping strategy or any other multi-sensory strategies that you find fits your students' needs. Yeah. And the, the rules, I guess, are reiterated down then at the bottom of the page where you have your student verbalize it. So I always say their own words are just as good as our words, as long as they're covering, um, covering what needs to be said. If they can explain that rule in their own way and it's complete, I think, I don't know how you feel about it, Kelly, but with my students, I find that's almost more powerful. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's a really good point because it, it can be very difficult for a student to memorize um, anything verbatim. You know, rote memory is a, a huge difficulty, especially if the student has dyslexia or other learning disabilities, you know, because then you you run into some, into some executive functioning struggles often. Mm -hmm. uh, so what happens is oftentimes kids can show how a rule works or maybe uh, explain it in their own words, but not always, you know, explain it precisely with our, our language. So, you know, you've got to use your professional judgment and, mm -hmm. you know, just make sure that they are truly understanding the concept, however you're able to get them there. Exactly, exactly. I almost find that when, when I have students who memorize things a bit too completely and wrote, that sometimes they're not generalizing that skill because they're, they're working so hard to memorize the line. So <laughs> right, right. use your own words if you can or illustrate it. <laughs> yeah, and that's the opposite end of the spectrum there. Um, 
So, you know, one thing I do want to bring up is that, you know, the kids, you mentioned keeping, holding onto these activity cards, but, you know, they're also collecting their spelling rule cards, um, usually on a binder ring. They, you know, we three, or not three hole punch, but we punch the corner and the kids, as they master a rule, they'll, they'll add it to their ring. So they end up with a whole collection. And I'm not sure if we mentioned this before either, but each one of these spelling rules uh, correlates directly back to the instructor's manual. So there is a lesson plan for each one of these spelling rules right in the instructional manual. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it all ties in. It is, it is nice and uh, comprehensive that way. I'd like to show you one last activity before we log out today. I'd like to uh, turn on my document camera here. We're just going to shift our view and we're going to take a look at a rule sort, which is kind of a, a twist on a word sort. We're still working with words, mm -hmm. but um, in this situation, we're going to so sort words according to spelling rule or spelling generalization. Yeah, that sounds great. This is an activity we both used quite a bit with students, and it can be done virtually with a little creativity. Hi, everyone. I'm back here and I'm going to show you what um, what I use quite often as an activity to help students with uh, practicing and identifying spelling rules that they've been taught. You know, one part of learning a spelling rule is application. It's applying the rule to words, which is a lot of the practice you're going to get when you're using the instructor's manual, um, as well as the activity pages uh, that I just shared with you earlier when Kate was with us. And you know the other part of practicing a spelling rule is really identification. It's being able to look at a word and identify those uh, letter patterns that follow a, a specific generalization. So this is pretty simple to do. You know what you're going to want to do is grab a deck of index cards or or something similar, and just write out some simple words that follow the spelling rules that you're looking to practice. Um, so this deck of cards here is going to follow our Cubs Can Drink Cola. Um, my deck of cards here are going to follow a previous rule that the kids already learned that we haven't talked about in this video. Uh, this is the Sick Elk Rule, which helps you with k at the end of words. I also made a deck of cards that follow the very first rule. Um, that we blogged about in the last video blog. And this one is the Sam Lowe's Fried Zucchini Rule, which is gonna be also known as your floss rule with your F, L, S, and Z at the end. Once you have your cards created, um, you're just gonna give them a nice shuffle. We'll mix these up. And you'll have your student grab their rule cards and place them out in front of them on a table or other flat surface. If they get confused about what these rules mean, you notice you got kind of a glare here, but you'll get the general idea. Uh, you know, they can always flip the card over and take a look at the definition on the back. So if I were to play this with a student, we could alternate turns if I pull up the first card is kiss, you got the student reading the word, and then you got them thinking about, hmm, you know, where would that word fall? Is it a kind Ken rule? Is it Cubs can drink cola? We're going to categorize those as one in, one in the same because the target sound is the same sound. Yeah, it could fit there, but guess what? It could also fit somewhere else. This could also be a Samuel's fried zucchini rule, but it would not fit here. So we could place that card, you know, right in between these two rules to indicate that this uh, word follows two different spelling rules. If I flip through my cards, my next word is script. Your student can read that word. And then they're again, determining where that that word would land. Uh, this is a great one to pull during this vlog because you're going to notice you've got this blend here with the SC and the SC blends and the SK blends actually do qualify for your K 
rule at the beginning of words. So the same logic is followed. Followed. You know, if you don't have an e, i, or y after that c, and you do need the k sound, you're going to uh, pick a c. So you're going to follow the Cubs rule, and so we can just file that right over here. And you know, as you can see, we've got different rules in these cards. We've got the word check. I see a ck at the end. Students already learned that in lesson three of the instructor's manual. Again, we're all pulling this all from the Silver Moon Instructor's Manual, Kit 1, and so on and so forth. So you can pick as many words as you'd like, as many rules as you'd like. And this is really, actually kids really kind of enjoy this. It's kind of a fun way for them just to see if they can mentally, you know, ID spelling rules just by looking at words. So, um, in addition to our activity pages, this is a great, great way to practice identifying rules as opposed to doing a word sort. I call this a rule sort. Okay, thank you so much for joining us today for the second blog post in our series. And I hope you come back for more next month. All right, take care, everyone. Bye bye.